Granit Xhaka has been one of Arsenal's standout players so far this season. The Swiss international averages a goal contribution once every two games in the Premier League and has also been a key player in the Europa League. He is deservedly getting the plaudits from the Arsenal faithful and also has his own chant now. But things were not always the same. In this piece, I'm going to tactically break down Xhaka's journey at Arsenal so far, how he was misused in the past and the role Mikel Arteta played in bringing out the best in him. Let's go back to 2016. Arsenal signed Granit Xhaka for a fee in the region of 30 million from Gladbach. When he signed for Arsenal, fans just assumed that he's going to be this hard tackling player that will break up play and finally fill the void left by Patrick Vieira way back in 2005. Arsene Wenger initially deployed Xhaka in a deep lying playmaker role alongside Cazorla. Arsenal were a very dominant side with Cazorla and the defensive situations for Xhaka were limited. What's interesting is that Wenger famously said that Xhaka was a box-to-box player but hardly ever played him there. After brief runs in the team with El Elneny and Coquelin, Arsene Wenger played a five-at-the-back formation and Pat Xhaka alongside Aaron Ramsey in the 2017 FA Cup winning run. The key to note here is that despite Xhaka having a more defensive role, he had the protection of a back five in defensive situations, so he typically always had support. As teams began to figure out this system, Wenger deployed a conventional 4-3-3 towards the end of his tenure. Xhaka was a deep playmaker once again and he was surrounded by technicians such as Ramsey, Wilshire and Ozil. On the ball, Xhaka was excellent and would very efficiently pick out these players in between the lines. The problem was in the defensive moments. Wenger's teams in his latter years lacked a coherent structure to deal with the defensive transition. Xhaka had no support and the back four he played with had error-prone players. As a result, his defensive weaknesses came to light and fans were beginning to doubt the player when in reality, the problem was the system. With Wenger leaving the club, the appointment of Unai Emery, a manager who was supposed to be tactically astute and structured, offered a ray of hope for Xhaka. But once again, he was a coach that did not understand the player at all. In the initial games, he played alongside Guendouzi, who lacked any semblance of positional awareness. Xhaka found himself isolated once again, with guys like Mustafi and Socrates covering for him. Of course, it was Xhaka that was made the scapegoat by fans. Xhaka even filled in at left-back and was tasked to deal with Wilfred Zaha on 1v1 situations, and it didn't end well. Even towards the end of that season, Xhaka was finding himself in situations where he was 1v1 against opposing wingers and he conceded the penalty which cost Arsenal Champions League football. Going into the next season, 2019-20, a large section of the fan base were against Xhaka. Whilst Emery made him club captain, after a vote of confidence by the dressing room, he did nothing to help the player from a tactical point of view. Against Tottenham, for example, Xhaka started in the middle of a three-man midfield and is asked to orchestrate the build-up and cut out on the transition. It leads to him being up against Son 1v1 and he concedes the penalty. Arsenal fans totally lose it with Xhaka. But few look at the system that caused him to end up in that situation in the first place. These incidents culminated in that infamous incident against Crystal Palace where Xhaka clashed with an angry Emirates Stadium crowd. His career at Arsenal, as he admitted himself in recent interviews, was all but over. Upstep Mikel Arteta Following Emery's sack and a brief run under interim manager Freddie Jungberg, Arteta was hired in December 2019 and was tasked with rebuilding the club. Unlike Emery, Arteta had a very clear idea of football and what he wanted from each player. He was also significantly better at understanding player profiles and ensured the role they were tasked with was one they could actually perform. Arteta initially deployed Xhaka alongside Torreira. Xhaka's role was quite limited. Apart from initiating attacks from deep, his job was to cover the space vacated by the left-back when they ventured forward. By limiting Xhaka's defensive responsibility to just this and solidifying the overall team structure by playing Torreira deeper and making the right-back inward, 
the distances Shaka had to cover to defend were minimal. Shaka naturally put in strong performances. In the FA Cup winning run, Arteta deployed a 3-4-3 hybrid formation. Unlike Wenger, Arteta's systems were based on the concept of positional play and the team would change shape in accordance with the phase of play. Granit Xhaka was back to his out-and-out central midfield role. The only difference being was that he had the protection of five defenders and Ceballos who was also playing a deeper role. As a result, he hardly ever found himself in isolated defensive situations and played an instrumental role in helping Arsenal win the 2020 FA Cup against all the odds. Until this point, Xhaka was a mainstay in midfield that was subject to constant change. He has played with the lights of Cazorla, Ramsey, Wilshire, Elneny, Coquelin, Ceballos, among others, but these players either left the club or fell out of favour with the manager. This, though, was about to change as Arsenal broke the bank, paying Thomas Partey's release clause of $45 million and capturing the Ghanaian international on deadline day of 2020. Unfortunately, due to Partey's injuries and Shaka being used at left-back at times due to Tierney's injuries, we didn't see them playing a proper run of games until last season. Fast forward to this season and you will see a drastic change in the way Granit Xhaka has been used by Arteta. Arsenal currently play with Partey as the lone six and Odegaard and Xhaka as the dual eights in front of him, a formation that has also been deployed by Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. Xhaka has a huge amount of freedom to play in the system. He has the freedom to run the channels and get into the opposition's penalty area and create chaos. What I love a lot is that with the addition of Zinchenko, the reliance of Shaka in build-up has reduced drastically. As you can see here, Zinchenko picks up the ball in central midfield. He is a natural at doing this and it enables Shaka to play with more freedom. This here is a typical area in which Shaka receives the ball. He has a runner who also works very hard off the ball in Martinelli in the defensive protection of the left-back, in this instance Tomiyasu. As a result, Xhaka has the license to make runs in the box and he deserves massive credit not just for the timing of his runs but also his finishing. Granit Xhaka is a truly reborn player. He deserves credit for turning things around after the 2019 incident but Arteta equally deserves the plaudits for not only continuing to back the player but actually understanding his qualities and playing him in an area that brings out the best version of Granite. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this segment. If you did, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more content in the pipeline and would love it if you could be a part of my YouTube journey. So on that note, please take care and enjoy the rest of the week. Come on you Gunners!